Welcome to Jaguar Boot Camp, setting up divisions and age groups in Jaguar version 4. This information is the property of innovative timing systems. All of it is confidential and may not be disclosed to anyone outside of innovative timing or your own company without written authorization from the president of innovative timing systems. This presentation is only provided to customers who are under a current support agreement that has not expired. You now see the Jaguar software main screen displayed. We're going to first of all access our race info menu up at the top. By clicking we'll bring down the submenu and we've got a number of options that are available to us. The option that we want to choose first is our division settings. When you're getting ready to use Jaguar for a race or a series of events, you need to set up your divisions so that the software understands what kind of races are going to be taking place. Now you can see here that I've got a 5K and a 10K already typed in. And in fact, I could type in an additional entry. So if I was timing a half marathon, for example, I might type half into the grid. Jaguar allows you to have up to 100 divisions being used on race day simultaneously. So let's use an example. Perhaps you're timing a triathlon and it's going to be a wave start. You might want to have wave one, perhaps wave two, wave three, etc. If you're timing a mountain bike event, you might have enduro, class one, class two, class three. In other words, you can type in anything you'd like to as a description. However, let's remember a few basic rules, and you'll have a reminder on the screen at all times that tells you this. Division descriptions must be two or more characters long. So I couldn't just type in five for a 5K. I have to have two characters. The next reminder is when entering runners into the database, we want to type the exact same description that we're assigning here to a particular runner or athlete. So let's say we were doing a cycling event and we were going to have wave starts. We have wave two, wave, uh, wave one, wave two. We might have corral one, let's type that in, and perhaps corral two, okay? Well, what we want to do is we want to make sure that when we register somebody for the event, their division matches exactly what we've typed in here. When Jaguar generates reports, it's going to go through this particular file and it's going to look at these division entries and it's going to attempt to match those to the entry in the database for that individual. So it's important that whatever we're typing here is exactly what we're using in our database. And you'll learn more about the database in one of the future modules. Now over to the right you'll see division age groups. And up above we have a reminder that says type in the division description, which we've done, and the age group setting A through G. You'll notice here we're just using letter A. Well, we could use letter B perhaps letter C. Again, we have A through G. Or we may just leave them A. And we'll learn more about what these age group settings mean in just a moment. To the right, we have division lap count. If you're timing a mountain bike event, or perhaps a criterium, or some other event where there's a limit on the number of laps that they're allowed to do, you could simply type in that number. So here, for example, we're saying you're only allowed to do five laps if you're in the 10K. In the wave one, perhaps, there's only going to be three laps. Where you'll find this to be very helpful are in things like cyclocross or mountain bike events, where typically there's a maximum number of laps being done, unless, of course, it's a timed event where they do as many laps as they can in some period. Okay, so we can set this lap count that's the maximum they're allowed to do, or we can leave it set at zero, in which case they can do as many laps as they want to. Once we have all of our division entries, we need to save this to the disk so the Jaguar can automatically load it in the future. So we come down and we simply click on Save Divisions, and when we do that, it'll pop up into a folder. Now in our particular case, we're going to be using a folder on our hard disk that we call Races. It's very important that you set up folders that hold the files that you'll be using for those individual events. And in one of our next modules, we're going to be talking about how to set up your files, perform file management, and also set your defaults. So you'll learn more about this very soon. For now, we just need to type in the division. Well, we're going to use Chesterfield Race Divisions for the Chesterfield 5K, 10K, Wave 1, 2, Corral 1, and Corral 2 this weekend. Kind of a busy race. We're going to click Save, and when we do that, it's automatically going to save that out to the disk for us. And now, we'll be able to use it in the future. 
you can set up as many division files as you want to. And typically what most customers do is they'll have four or five different types of files set up that are pretty much common in terms of the types of events. So they might have 5K. They might have one that's just 10K. They might have one where it's a combination of 5 and 10K. So you can set up as many as you need, and it makes it quick to load them, which you do right here on race day. Again, there are defaults that will automatically load these, and that's coming up in one of our next modules. There are some other options available to us. We could print the division names. We could clear them off the screen. We could delete a particular row. So if we didn't need wave one, we would select delete row, say yes, and it would automatically remove that for us. And if we wanted to insert a row, so perhaps we meant to put back in wave one, we could type or click on insert row and then type in the entry wave one. So divisions are quite simple. Let's recap. We just simply type in the description. We then come over and decide which age group setup we want to use for that race. Now let's talk about that. What does this mean? It means that we can have different age groups for our different races. We can have truly unique age groups. Let's go take a look at how that's done because that's next here in our training is to take a look at setting up our age groups. I'm back up to the race info menu. I simply come down and select age group settings. When I do that, the screen will open up and we'll have on there all of the age groups that we can use for our races. So you'll see here we have age group A. I can click on age group B. Here's age group C and all the way out to G as you can see here. So we have seven different tabs. That's what we call these tabs like tabs on files. And we have multiple age groups that we can set up. Now you'll notice under age group A, I've got males 1 to 14. I've got males 15 to 24. These descriptions can be just about anything you want, but we'd recommend that you always use the word male or perhaps boys or perhaps men. We want you to use the gender, and it's very important because when you generate your reports, this is what shows up as the header on those reports. So it's best to use something that's descriptive and makes sense. Now, once we enter that description, we have to come over and enter the age ranges that correspond to what we typed in. So here we see 1 to 14, 15 to 24. You don't want uh, the ages to overlap. And in fact, if you do that, you'll get an error as you exit this screen. So for example, we couldn't put 13 here because if we exited, that would give us an error and it would say these overlap and Jaguar can't make sense of who belongs to what particular age group. So it's very important that you always type in these age ranges correctly as I've done here. Now you actually have 26 different male and female age groups you can set up under tab A. There's 26 total. So if you think about that, that's more than enough for your men, more than enough for your women, and you've got multiple tabs. So for the 5K, we could define what age groups we want to use. For the 10K, we could say they're going to use age group B. Maybe for the half, they're going to use age group C. Now, where in reality would you do this? Well, perfect example would be if you had a fun run for children prior to a 5 and 10K. Maybe it's a short 250-yard run. You want to give out awards to the kids to reward them for running. And you could essentially come in here under perhaps age group C, and you could type something like in boys, uh, let's say perhaps uh, 5 to 8. So we'll say 5 to 8 on screen. We'll type in 5. We'll type in 8. Now I could also come back and I could say, well, let's have boys 9 to 12. And obviously here I would type 9 and I would type 12. So that's how easy it is for us to set up a unique age group, which would be called age group C. Remember, back in our divisions in that column that we had, we would enter C for the division called Children's Fun Run. And it would use this set of ra or this range of ages when it calculates the reports. OK, so you get the idea. You have A through G, seven of them. Typically, I recommend that you always use A first. In other words, don't come out and set up E or F or G. If you just have one age group needed for your event, just simply use A, because it's easier to remember that, OK? Much easier. Now, one other shortcut I want to show you. I'm going to intentionally delete all of the female age group descriptions. And I could delete the ages as well. But I'm just going to do the descriptions for now. And that will let us show you something that's very handy. When you type in all these male age groups, perhaps you have 15 or 20 of them, and you don't want to have to sit there and type all the females, there's a little icon at the bottom of the screen called Copy Male to Female. So if I click on that, it'll allow me to say, yes, I want you to copy the male values 
to the females. Notice what it did. It automatically filled in the females for us, and it put in their age ranges. In other words, it converted the word male to female. This will work really well for you as long as you have male, you have men, or you have boys. It's designed to automatically do the conversion for you. It saves you a little bit of time. Speaking of all those entries down here and all those things you can do, notice that we have icons like insert row, delete row, copy age group, copy male to female, clear an age group, print the age groups, load and save them. Okay, so once you've defined all your age groups and you've set all that up, you can quickly save them. What is copy age group? Well, let's say that in A, you've got all your settings and it turns out you'd like to have those in D as well. Perhaps you're gonna make a copy of that. You can click on copy age group and instead of having to physically go in and type in whatever age group you wanted to uh, set up, you could say use one that's already there. So I'll say, you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And notice what happened. It took our age group from A, it copied it over to D. Very simple. Okay, finally, the last thing we want to do in our age groups, let's go back over to A, is we want to set up our various winners. So, for example, our top males, our top females. So we might allow the top three males and females to win a special award. We want to have our masters that we set up. So we can set up their age group and the number of those to include for both male and female. We have grandmasters. We have senior masters. If you're not going to use those, just leave the value set to zero. Again, don't forget that there are notes down here that will help you make sense of what you're doing. Age group A is the default setting for age groups not filtered by divisions. Descriptions have to be three or more characters long. Ages should not overlap. Minimum age has to be one. No blank lines here. And leave your unused entries as zero. Here's a great tip that will help you on race day. Number one, don't ever set the age to zero. There is no age zero. Everything has to be at least one. If you put a zero in there, you're telling Jaguar, I'm essentially done with my age groups, and you won't see the rest of your report come out. So never use a zero unless you're using it to say, I'm done. Number two tip. Notice here we have male and female no age. Sometimes people don't want to tell you how old they are, so they can't qualify for an age group award. So a little trick is you can have male no age and give them an age of 99. Same thing for female. What will happen when Jaguar generates its reports, it will, it will include everybody that gave us an age, and those who didn't will essentially be uh, categorized under male, no age, or female, and that means they're not qualified to win an award. Okay, let's do a final recap. What have we done here very quickly? First of all, we've gone to race info, we've selected our division settings, and when we go in there, we can simply type in the names of those, division, those divisions that are racing perhaps this weekend. I can then put in what letter I want to use that corresponds to the different age groups that I've set up. I can decide if it's a lap event that they can do unlimited laps by having zero, or I can type in the number of laps that they're limited to. At the bottom of the screen, I have some helpful information as well as some icons that allow me to save this information or to manipulate it as I need to. We also learned about age groups. How do we go in and set up age groups? Well, we simply bring up the age group screen, as I've done. We type in our descriptions, which is what will appear on the report. We set the age ranges. We have seven different tabs that we can use to set those up. And then we have some settings for things like total number of male and female finishers to exclude from the age group and who will receive special awards for being the fastest in the event, as well as our masters, our grandmasters, our senior masters. Now don't forget to always save your age groups to the disk, save your divisions to the disk, because then you'll be able to set up defaults in the software that will let them automatically load on race day. Our defaults is going to be the discussion that you'll find in our very next module. So that concludes our training on how to use divisions and age groups in Jaguar version 4. We'll look forward to seeing you in the next module.